Hello, welcome to edit mode part 2. This time I'd like to go through the process of modelling some pretty simple objects to get an idea of the different tools available and perhaps open up some new ways of thinking, you know, how to approach things. I'll be going fairly quickly I think. The idea isn't really to copy what you see here, though you're welcome to of course, but it's more over to get an understanding perhaps of the bigger picture, you know, where some tools are, a few useful tips I hope will crawl in as well. So let's get going. Okay, the first thing to do is perhaps go to Google and do an image search and find a reference for the object that you're going to be making. So in this case, it's going to be this pawn. I literally just did um, the chess piece pawn search and um, <laughs> looked for the, uh, the the image search and found this. So we're going to use this as a background image to uh, render um, to model against. So in order to apply that, we can do that two ways. We can press N. Uh, with the Blender window active, scroll down and find our background images panel here, tick the box and click add image and then you can go open and you can choose your image that way or it's also possible to drag and drop say from the desktop or file manager and just drop it in the background there and that will add it as an image also. In order to visualize this we have to be in an orthographic and say like a front view or so, so I can press 1 on the number pad and then press number pad 5 and there the reference image appears. Now I'd like to change the size down a little bit because it's massive at the moment and you notice it kind of disappears behind our cube here. We could solve that two ways, we could press Z for wireframe mode and then we can see through our object or we could choose the front option here in order to visualize it in front of our mesh. So either way we can bring it up along the Y axis and so it's just about on the floor, something like that, and begin modeling. Now we could start from either end really. In one, in some ways it would be easier to start from the top because this is literally just a sphere and then we could start extruding out the parts from that. I'm going to start from the bottom because I can show you how to join the sphere, a sphere to the mesh that we're going to create. So let's make sure our cube is selected and we'll press X and delete our cube and I'm going to go to Shift A and add in a mesh and a circle here. Now because I'll be using subdivision surfaces uh, to smooth the model out, I don't need 32 vertices here. So I'm going to just change that down to maybe 16 would be a more reasonable number. It's also easier to edit these in edit mode. The, the fewer vertices you have, the, the easier really. But you've, if you're not going to use subdivision surface and you're going to be modeling a low poly something for a game, maybe you have to be a little bit more careful about the number of vertices that you choose to start with. So we've got our circle now with 16 vertices, I'll go back into uh, front uh, mode here. I'm in edit mode after pressing tab and I'm just going to start extruding. So I can go E to extrude and we can see how we're in control of our extrusion here. If I want to lock to some axis, in this case the Z axis is going to be pretty useful. While we're in grab mode I press Z and then we can constrain to that axis. I'm going to select everything and scale down along everything except Z by pressing Shift Z and just bring those in so it's more reasonable uh, sort of size. Maybe Alt and right click here and bring that down. One interesting thing is if we were to add a face here now by just pressing F, if we were to extrude now it's going to move along the normal of this face which is the, the direction the face is pointing in and in fact this is going to be the Z axis so if we do this it means that we wouldn't have to press Z each time uh, we do an extrusion so I think that's going to be useful for us. This is going to be a bit wide so we're just going to E and uh, sorry S and uh, to scale that in a little bit and then we're just going to go up the model this way so E and S is basically what I'm going to be pressing here maybe maybe G and Z once in a while if I change my mind so E and S E and then E a little bit and then S into here and E S uh, so bring those up E maybe that goes in a little way here and then E up a little bit and S out E uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that there, E and then S right back in again, E and we are beginning to get towards the top where I'd like to add this sphere in. So how can we do this? I go Shift A and add in a UV sphere and adding it in edit mode. But what I need to do is choose the right number of seg uh, ring uh, segments, yes, in this case, so we've got the right number of vertices to attach to our existing mesh. So we're going to change the segments here down to 16. 
and that'll give us the right number in order to make this possible easily. So GZ, let's grab it up and um, scale it down a little bit so it's the right sort of size. Something around there looks to be okay. And we've got to choose a point where we're going to join these together. So if I deselect everything with a and then I'm going to choose these vertices here now what's happened is that it hasn't selected the vertices at the back so what I want to do actually is do that in wireframe mode I can do that by pressing Z and then B and then just select that and then you can see that I've got all the vertices at the back there X and delete the faces we can now we've got a hole that we can attach the rest of the mesh to so in this case what I can do is alt and right click here I'm going to go X and delete the, those faces and reselect that and then Alt and Shift right click here so we've got those two loops selected and I'll use the bridge tool here so I'm going to press W and bridge edge loops and that will connect the mesh quite nicely to the rest of the model so here I can B and maybe box select all of that and then B and the middle click and drag to deselect those and G and Z and drag this down to a rough sort of size about like that and I think that's more or less got the, uh, the, the object done there maybe it's a little wide at the bottom but we could go in and tweak that later the shading is a little bit weird because we started from a circle and it doesn't necessarily know which ways in and out so the normals aren't correct is where I'm going with that they easily easily to fix uh, select everything with A and then control and N just to recalculate the normals there and we are good to go now I said I was going to use a subdivision surface to sort of smooth this out so let's go ahead and add in our subdivision surface modifier we'll press the modifiers buttons in the properties editor and then we'll choose subdivision surface I'm going to bump the levels up to two and also choose the smooth shading option over on the in the tool region now the model goes kind of a little bit spongy looking maybe and this is where we need to adjust our topology just a little bit in edit mode so that we get edges which are closer together where sharp corners should be so this is going to work one of two ways what we can do is we can do control and R for loop cut and we get this purple line where the loop cut is going to go we we'll do a left click and then we can we're in edge slide mode effectively and we can choose to place the loop close to the, uh, the where the sharp corners should be so control r slide it in if you make a mistake it's easy enough to fix you go alt and right click to select a loop and then g and then g again and you're back in edge slide mode so you can do it that way so control and r and i'll just add in a few rather quickly here just to sharpen up these edges another way you could do this is using uh, bevel so alt and right click here and we'll choose control and b for bevel if we scroll up on our mouse wheel we can do more segments and in this case i just want one segment and i might look over in the operator panel here where we can fine tune the last performed action so you could change the amount of bevel there you could change the segments but you could also change this profile the profile is how much the bevel is going to round out the corners so if we want a really flat bevel we can choose the profile of one and this gives us exactly the same result as if we did if we slide in two edge loops either side so that could be a quick way uh, just to be doing that so I'm going to do one of the two whichever takes my fancy at the time let's perhaps do a bevel here control B and it should remember our settings from last time and indeed it has so that's a pretty quick way just to maybe do that hold down shift to fine-tune the uh, operation there control B and maybe make this area a little bit more defined so we can control R slide it in and there we have it so pretty easy pretty simple to to model this particular object let's move on to the next one right this next one we're going to be cutting some holes in this cube and what I'd like to happen is to have a hole in each side and they're all going to join together so you'll be able to see through the cube from each side so there are a few ways to do this this is interesting enough just to demonstrate a few techniques here so let's get started by going into edit mode now I'm going to set this up with the idea that we could use a subdivision surface on it um, so in order to do that it's going to set up the topology ahead of time 
don't worry about it too much but we're just going to do it this way and if you'd like to have an experiment you can find out different ways of doing this I'm sure of it so let's select everything with a and I'm gonna press W and I'm going to choose subdivide here and I'm going to choose two cuts so the holes that we're going to make are going to be centered around sort of this face here so let's go into face select mode and I'm going to first of all inset it just slightly so I'm going to press I for inset and that gives us this over here and maybe what I want to do is control and number pad plus to select the to uh, to select more of the selection and just scale this out a bit maybe a bit like that so we've got a bit of a bigger hole going on so in order to do this we're going to have to x and delete the face this gives us a hole very good but what we really want to do is have the same hole on the other side and then we can connect them uh, with a bit of a sort of tunnel so how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, I'm going to want to copy the structure of this over to the other side. We can do that fairly easily. If I select a face here, I can go Alt, Control, and Shift, and F, and this selects linked flat faces. You've got a sharpness setting here, so if we went over 90, that would start to select the whole of the rest of the object, but we'll stick at 1 for now because they are all completely flat. I'll go X and delete the faces. This leaves us a nice large hole here. And we've got a couple of ways that we could duplicate this face over to the other one. I'm going to use snapping in this case. So, Alt, Control, Shift, and F. We'll make a duplicate of the face with uh, Shift D. And then I'm just going to constrain it to the Y axis by pressing Y and push it over roughly in position on the other side. So in order to use the snapping, what I want to be able to do is snap, say, a vertex here to a vertex there along the Y axis so that we can get this exactly aligned on the other vertices so in order to do that I can press L over this uh, this mesh part of mesh here to select it all that was L to select linked and on the header here of the 3d view we've got our snap element options and the one I want to choose is vertex because this is going to allow us to snap to vertices the magnet icon will turn the snap on permanently I'm not going to use that but you could use it and then whenever you press G to grab and say uh, hover over a vertex you can see how this is snapping but if I turn this off and I press G I've got freedom of movement of the uh, of the selection if I hold down control that then enables the snapping now it's snapping the closest it's it's set to closest at the moment so it's going to try and sn select, snap the closest vertex uh, to our target snapping point so I don't actually need to press G and Y but I'm going to anyway I press G and Y we can see that we'll hover over this vertex and hold down control and it will snap here now what's happened is that we've got duplicate vertices all around this edge you see if I grab one here and press G that they're not kind of connected but we've got a tool that we can use to make to merge those all together and that tool is called remove doubles so we can select everything and we can go W and we can choose remove doubles so we can see we've got 12 vertices removed there now if we select this one at the corner you can see that it is all connected up so another thing to do would be just to connect these uh, these two sort of well, I don't know what you're going to call them tunnel <laughs> a tunnel through the cube maybe um, so I can alt and right click on this edge loop here Alt and Shift and right click here to select both of them and then I'm just going to go W and I'm going to choose bridge edge loops and this will now connect the tunnel through the center of the cube you can see all the way through there and that looks pretty good now the shading on this side of the cube is a bit messed up and that's because now the normals are pointing inwards because they were pointing this way on the other side and now they're pointing that way on the uh, opposite side because we've moved the faces across so we can select everything we'll go control and n and that will recalculate our normals so the shading is all fine now what I would like to be able to do is copy these two faces that we've got over to the other one so we're going to do a similar kind of uh, um, operation here I'm going to select this face I'm going to go alt control shift and f for link flat faces and I'm going to press x and I'm going to delete those faces now I'm going to select uh, well I'm going to have to work out a way of doing this so I'm going to go alt and control shift and f and I'm going to make a duplicate but I'm just going to right click and I'm going to leave it where it is 
because we need to rotate this 90 degrees what I can use is the 3d cursor as our pivot point so at the moment it's centered in the middle of the object which is in the middle of the scene I haven't changed any of that if yours has gone away somewhere you can go uh, shift and C and just recenter that so if I go into top view now with number pad 7 and press 5 for the orthographic mode I can change my pivot point to be the 3d cursor and we'll see that our manipulator is now changed to be at the center of the object which is where the 3d cursor is if I rotate now this face I can I, if I change my snapping back to increment I can rotate and I can hold down control and we can see how that's snapping around just like that to make this a little bit uh, visually uh, visually easier to look at what I can also do is go R and then Z to rotate around the Z axis I hold down control and I'm going to just rotate that 90 degrees I could also just type 90 into the, uh, the, the header there but I've just done it this way so I select everything now and do W and remove doubles again and we've got our new face kind of situated here so what's going to happen now is that I'm going to want to extrude this along the x-axis and it's going to intersect with our sort of tunnel that's going on. So first of all I need to cut a hole in the tunnel in the right sort of place that enables us to remove a couple of faces and, and push this kind of tunnel on through if you will. So how do we do that? Well, we can add some loop cuts in to the central part using Control and R and I'll scroll up once to add two loop cuts. Now if I look at this from a side view, we can see that our loop cuts aren't in line with the hole, so we, we can use our vertex snapping tool again in this case in order to do that. So I'm going to alt and right click on this edge loop here, which is inside. I can go control shift and tab and choose vertex snapping again. And I can this time I can snap along the y axis to this point. So I can go G, Y, and hold down control and snap to there. Now that means that our edge is now in line with the hole, and we can just do this on the other side as well. So G and Y hold down control while hovering over this vertex, and that works just fine. So I'm just going to make sure our normals are correct, and I'm going to go into face select mode. We've got this face now, which is in the middle, and we can just X and delete that. And we've also got one on the other side, but I'll remove that in just a moment. So we'll go to our vertex select mode. We'll select this with Alt and right click. We'll select the inner one with Alt and right click. And we'll do W and bridge edge loops. So now we've got this kind of tunnel going on. Um, it stops halfway through, but that's because I want to be able to now uh, copy our face from this side over to where this one is. So control and tab let's choose this alt control shift and f x and delete the faces let's choose this guy so alt control shift and f again and this time what are we going to do well we could duplicate and we could r z and uh, rotate it around the 3d cursor 180 degrees or we could use the scaling and I'll show you how the scaling works if we do S and X you can see that we are scaling and as if you look in the bottom left corner as we reach a scale of zero that is where the 3d cursor is so S and X and you can see as we approach the 3d cursor that is getting towards there and we can go in a negative direction so actually when we reach negative 1 is is the same position on the up opposite side of a 3d cursor so to do this quickly S X minus 1 on the keyboard and that puts it exactly in the right position for us I can select everything and I'll go W and remove doubles and now all we need to do is remove the face and bridge the loops again. So we've got this central face uh, selected, X, and delete the faces. We can see that our normals aren't consistent, so select everything, Control N, back into mesh select mode, uh, vertex select mode rather, shift and right click here, uh, alt and right click there, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm going too quickly. Um, and then W and remove um, W and bridge the edge loops. So we've got that now. Now there's a pretty easy and quick way just to copy these faces to the top and the bottom sides. So we can select that face, select that face, do Alt, Control, Shift and F, and that selects all of those. And then we can X and delete the faces. Then in fact what we can do is, we know we're going to have to get rid of this guy, so X and delete that face, X and delete that face, so we've got a hole all the way through. 
And because the remove doubles tool works so well, we can go shift uh, shift D, duplicate the whole thing, and then we'll just go R Y 90. Doesn't really matter which direction we'll go, but that now lines up everything because the model is perfectly symmetrical. Select everything, W, remove doubles, Control N, recalculate the normals just in case, and we are done. Now, the reason I set up the, top, the topology as such is if we wanted to add a subdivision surface modifier to this, I'll just do that now. If we wanted to be able to round off our edges and stuff like that, this gives us a good, good enough topology to make that possible. So, for example, I could do Control R here, and I'll, if I if I want to align it perfectly with this side, I can press E for an even edge slide, and we see that dot appears, and I press F to flip that to the other side. And it's quite easy now to go around the model and sharpen up these edges, kind of just like that. If we change the levels up to two. Control R E, and uh, maybe on the bottom side as well. We'll do E and then F. Control R E, and uh, let's call that good enough. So this gives us a nice sort of bevel uh, around like that, where we've kind of lost the the appearance of the holes here, and we can easily fix that by adding in some more loops um, around here like that to sharpen those up. Um, so this likely isn't the, the the best topology that you could ever come up with in order to achieve this kind of effect. We obviously need some edge loop around there to sharpen that side up. But you can go around the model and kind of do that. Maybe one here to sharpen this. And it starts to look pretty good. So you can have a play around with that. But uh, I think it's time we move on to the next object. Continuing the theme of holes, cutting holes into a curved surface can be more challenging. What I want to do here is just maybe get a, a sphere or something like that and cut a couple of holes in it. Just show one way you might be able to get this to work. Again, we'll be making use of the subdivision surface. I'll just show you something. If we select here a UV sphere, which you might think would be a good starting point for this. In fact, the the way the mesh is structured, it gives us this these rather small faces and triangles towards the top. The faces get larger towards the equator, and then again back towards the, the poles at the top, you know, the top and the bottom. So the the topology, the mesh here, the faces aren't evenly sized, and that's not going to be ideal for us if we're going to be wanting to cut holes in it. I feel so. Another way to start this would be with actually with a cube. So I'll go Shift A, add in a cube drop to edit mode and we'll need to subdivide this a couple of few times in order to get the right amount of topology for us so we go W subdivide and then change the number of cuts in the operator panel to maybe six cuts that's quite a lot let's try, well, let's stick with that anyway it doesn't matter at the moment so now we need a tool maybe that can convert this into a sphere and we have one such as that it's called two sphere and the, the hotkey for that is alt and shift and s and then we can just drag that to a value of one there. And that gives us a more even topology. It's not perfect, but it's more even than, than what we had before. And it's all quads as well. Each face has four vertices. In order to smooth this out, then let's add our subdivision surface modifier at level two and choose the smooth shading. You see, that's a pretty good uh, sphere there. It's not perfect sphere, by the way. Um, if you look at an orthographic mode and uh, front and side, it's 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 not perfect, but it, for our purposes, it will certainly suffice. Into edit mode, then let's select some arbitrary location. Let's say this point here, we want to cut a hole in. How would we do it? The first thing I'm going to do is select the faces where that we're going to have to remove in this case, and I'm going to use the inset tool, which is I, and just inset that some amount. Then I'm going to press F to make a face out of it, and I want to use the two sphere tool again in order to um, convert this to a to a circle in this case. So Alt and Shift and S, and we can see how that works. There's another tool in the add-ons uh, which tries to do this and it would actually do a better job for us in this case so I'll show you where that is now if we go to the file and we'll go to the user preferences in the add-on section if you search for loop you should be able to find loop tools add-on and enable it there these options then appear in the tool region 
uh, down the bottom you have this loop tools panel which appears and one of the options is circle if we press this now on this we can see that it's kind of rotated it a little bit but it actually gives us a more evenly placed circle so in order to rotate this back I can align the view with this circle by pressing shift and number pad 7 and then I can simply rotate this back maybe roughly about there like that I may be um, I think that'll be fine. I need to recenter the view now by pressing one, and that'll uh, take the. It was it was kind of um, rolled a little bit there. So scale that down maybe a little bit. I'll do another inset now. I'll press I to inset, and then we'll be able to extrude this in. So we'll press E to extrude just once, and then E to extrude it again, and we've got a pretty nice kind of looking hole there on one side. If we wanted to cut a hole in the other side. What we could do is align our view again with this face, and we'll, but in this case we'll go to the opposite side. So instead of that side, we're going to go to the opposite side. So Shift and Control and Number Pad 7 will give us the back view of that face. And we can see that we're going to want to build, put the face sort of round about here, something like that. So again, I'll go back into this mode. So how can we do this? This is going to be the same sort of procedure, really. I'll select those faces. We'll go E to extrude. Uh, we'll go, sorry, that was I for inset. And I'm going to press F and um, Alt and Shift and S to see if the, uh, the, the, the sphere option gives us the right sort of result here. It's not great, so I'm going to press circle and see if that's any better. That kind of looks OK. And then again, we can go E to extrude. Uh, I really wanted to do an inset first. So inset that, then E once, just to move, just to give us an edge loop around there. E again, and then we've got our, uh, our, our two, two tubes now, which we really need to connect up. Let's choose the optimal display in the subdivision surface modifier to get rid of that all that extra mesh that we don't really need to be seeing right now. And if we can, we can try and select this face. So we've got the two ends of the kind of tube going on there. We press W and we can choose to bridge the edge loops. And that gives us now a sort of hole all the way through the mesh. It looks like I might need to control an N and recalculate those normals. Yes, indeed. And we can actually get rid of a couple of these edge loops. So we could go select this one and X and uh, delete the edge loops. Select this one and X and delete the edge loops because we don't really need them in there. And there you can see you've got a hole all the way through the sphere. So that's one way. It might not be perfect, but you, you've got to be you've got, got to be able to create the topology around where you want the hole to be. And in order to get these nice crisp surfaces, you can see I can control R and add in edge loops uh, kind of close to where they need to be here. Um, add one near the top to kind of sharpen that up uh, that would only be possible if you'd thought about the topology beforehand in order to help the subdivision surface modifier out so these are things to bear in mind as you're creating the mesh um, going forward Okay, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching if you made it this far. It's been kind of a long video, I know that. I wanted to show some different objects, uh, basically uh, how to do them, or at least an approach to how to do them. It should give you an idea of what tools are available um, in Blender to create really whatever you want. If you've got any ideas of maybe I could do an edit mode part three if there were some other simple objects that you'd like to have included. Otherwise, I want to continue with, with the rest of the series, uh, hopefully get those done as quickly as possible and uh, we'll, we'll look at how to light and shade our scene and move on that way so uh, again leave a comment if you like thanks very much and i'll see you soon